Welcome to the lecture for Math 1325 for Section 11.2, Derivatives of Exponential Functions. So here we have a graph of the natural um, exponential function, uh, which is using Euler's constant as the base. <clears throat> Interestingly, if you can see here that everywhere we have a number of points along the graph, Almost everywhere, the tangent line, you can see it in light blue, almost disappears into the graph right at the point. And so this identifies an interesting happening that um, if the function is e to the power of x, the derivative is actually the same as the function. So the slope at the point is actually equal to the slope of the function. If, the, if we have a function in the exponent, this is where we have f of u equals e to the u, where u is some function of x, not just the variable x, then the derivative is still e to that same exponent, but then times um, the derivative of the exponent. You could think of this as the chain rule, where we're first taking the derivative of the outer function, which is e to the u, which is the same e to the u, times the derivative of the inner function, which would be the exponent, and so we'd have u prime. So let's try some examples here. Here again, we're going to take the derivative of the outer function, which is e to the u, where u is 4x cubed. So we're going to have the first part of our answer is going to be e to the 4x cubed, and then we're going to have time, that times the derivative of the exponent, which is a simple power rule, which is 12 x squared. So our final answer is simply 12x squared e to the 4x cubed. <clears throat> Here we have another problem. Um, we actually have a product rule. Notice we have two var uh, the variable t here. So we have 3t times e raised to the power of 3t squared plus 5t. So we have a couple things going on here. We have a constant. Then we have the power rule. And then we have um, the, a natural exponential raised to a function. So we have a chain rule here as well. So let's look at this. So we have the derivative of the first, which is the derivative of 3t is simply 3, times the second, which is e to the 3t squared plus 5t, plus the derivative of the second part. That's the derivative of the exponential function. Again, remember, this is e to the 3t squared plus 5t, so e to that same exponent, times the derivative of the exponent, which is 6t plus 5. Bring the 2 down time in the front. 2 times 3 is 6t. Drop the exponent by 1, plus the derivative of 5t is simply 5, times the other piece that's left, which is 3t. So we get this answer here, and notice if we factor out the e, uh, the e to the 3t squared plus 5t, we can also factor out a 3. And it just gets a little bit um, less complicated. And here what we have is 3t um, times 6t plus 5. Okay. All right. The last piece here we have is a quotient rule where we're taking the derivative with respect to w. Remember that the quotient rule is the derivative of the numerator. The derivative of the numerator is simply 1 times the denominator. Derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator. Again, here we have e to the 3w times 3. So the derivative of the outer is the exponential, e to the 3w, times the derivative of the exponent, 3w, excuse me, 3, times the numerator. So we have e to the 3w times 3 and then times the numerator all over the denominator squared. You should know this formula well by now. And so now we're just going to simplify this. And so we get e to the 3w minus e 3w e to the 3w over e to the 6w, which is e to the 3w times e to the 3w. If you notice, each of these terms has e to the 3w in it. So if we factor that out, then one of them cancels out, and we get 1 minus 3w over e to the 3w. Okay, This is all algebra at this point. You should be able to figure it out. 
So let's look at a an application of this. Um, typical applications of exponentials are financial investment or financial growth. When $100 is invested at 8% compounded continuously, the amount that accrues after t years, which is called the future value, is s of t equals 100 e to the point zero eight t. At what rate is this money? At what rate is the money in this account growing? So we're looking for the rate of change of this future value. So we're looking for the derivative of s of t. This is a very simple derivative to take. Again, we have an exponential derivative. It's hard to read there. I should maybe make that a little bit larger. And we're doing it at the end of one year. So first we need to just find the general derivative of, of s of t. And then we can plug in 1 and plug in 10 to answer our two specific questions. So the rate of growth of the money is given by the derivative of s of t. Again, we have the 100 in front because that's a constant. Our derivative of e to the point 0, 0.08t is e to the point 0, 0.08t times the derivative of the exponent. The derivative of that exponent is just 0 0.08. When we multiply these out, we get simply 8e raised to the power of 0 0.08t. To find our answers, we simply plug in 1, and we get approximately 8 and 2 thirds. Um, which remember this is a dollar amount so if you leave it like that or if you said eight and two-thirds you would be wrong because this um, what we're looking at s of t is the future value of money so it's in dollars so our rate of change is in dollars per year or what's going to happen remember that when we're looking at s of one this is just like marginals. This is the money that we're going to make in the next year. So during the second year, money will grow by $8.67. So if you left this on like this on the test, you would have it wrong because the value should be um, expressed in terms of dollars and cents, which would mean two decimal points. Do the same thing at 10, plugging in 10, and we get 17.804 or $17.80. And again, remember that S, S prime 10, or the derivative of S at the value of 10, is saying that during the 11th year, money will grow by $17.80. Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at some other exponentials where the base is not the natural or Euler's constant. Um, here we have a represents any constant. This could be 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 10 to the x, etc. So when we have um, a constant raised to the power of x, our derivative is simply a to the x, so it's the same thing times the natural log of a. Now if our exponential is a constant, again remember a is a constant raised to some function, then the only thing we are adding in here is the derivative of the function too. So we have a to that same exponent times the derivative of the exponent times the natural log of a. And again, this is kind of a, an outshoot of the chain rule. So here we have just a simple a to the x where a is 4. So we just plug that in, 4 to the x, natural log of 4. Again, in this problem, a equals 4. So we just plug it into the simple exponential derivative. The last piece here, piece here is we have a equals 5, and then u equals x squared plus x. So here again, we have um, the a to the exponent for our derivative. This should be y prime t, not y of t. Um, a to the exponent times the natural log of the base, which is the natural log of 5, times the derivative of the exponent, which is 2x plus 1.